guys and welcome back to reading club so today i'm going to start a new book it's called daisy and the trouble with life so it's a very nice book and it's a whole entire daisy series so i hope you'll follow me with every book okay so i'm gonna read you chapter one to chapter five chapter one the trouble with life is it's so not fair my mom says that sometimes life is like that, and that I should take this opportunity to think about things. It's all right for her. She's not the one having to sit here trying to think about things to think about. Thinking can be really hard when you're my age, especially when you're grounded. Excuse me a minute, I need to go somewhere. Chapter 2. The trouble with being grounded is it's so boring. You absolutely can't go anywhere at all. There's absolutely nothing to do and absolutely no one to play with. Mom says I'm lucky that she's even allowed me downstairs into the lounge after what I've done. She says that most moms would have sent me to my room for about a hundred years after what I've done. I think Gabby's mom wouldn't. My best friend Gabby never gets grounded. Even when she drew on her lounge wallpaper with felt tips, Gabby didn't get grounded. That's the trouble with moms. You can't swap them for other moms when you need to. Sorry, I need to go somewhere again. Chapter 3. I don't know why it's called grounded anyway. If you ask me, if someone says you're grounded, then it should mean you have to stay on the ground. No hopping and jumping, flying, or parachuting. That's what grounding sh grounded should mean. Staying on the ground. Whether it's inside ground or outside ground, it shouldn't make any difference. As long as you're on the ground, you should be okay. Both my trainers were on the ground in the hallway this morning when Gabby called for me. Gabby is my secret sister. So we're in a secret club. In fact, it's so secret, only me and her are in it. Every Saturday, we take in turns to be club leaders and think of things to do. Last week, it was my turn to choose, so we dug a mud trap in the back in my back garden. Then we magic tiptoed the cat from next door into a lion and tried to get him to fall into our trap, but he wouldn't. He just stayed on Mrs. Pike's wall and refused to come down. That's the trouble with cats. They only ever want to do cat things, not lion things. In the end, we had to bang him down with a spade. Gabby hit the wall with the spade handle, and I kicked the wall with my trainers. Tiptoes jumped down then, all right. Jumped down then, all right. He jumped down off the wall on the very first bang. Only not as in my garden, into Mrs. Pike's. He never comes into our garden anymore. In fact, I didn't see him on the wall for five days after that. Gabby says he must have seen us making the mud trap and it would have been much better if we'd magicked him into a hippopotamus. Hippopotamuses love mud. Gabby's definitely right, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to try today. A better spell and a bigger trap. Except we can't now because I'm not allowed out to play, thanks to mom. Excuse me a minute, I need to go somewhere again. Chapter 4. When Gabby called for me this morning, I was dressed and ready and everything. I saw her walking up the path from the lounge window. She brought her own spade to help dig the trap. Trap with a stick for stirring the mud and hopefully some words that rhymed with hippopotamus. That's the trouble with writing magic spells. There are hardly any words that rhyme with hippopotamus. I promised my mom I would stay grounded on the ground in the back garden with Gabby. I promised I wouldn't lift my feet up off the grass or anything apart from when I need to put my foot right there. Ah, uh, sorry. When I need to put my foot on the spade, but she said, Start right there. Sorry, Gabby. Not today, Gabby. Daisy's grounded. Daisy did something extremely naughty yesterday, and she'll be staying indoors today. I'm sorry to spoil your fun, but it's important that Daisy does some hard, long, hard thinking today. She needs to think long and hard about the naughty thing that she did yesterday. And most importantly, she needs to learn to listen. How poo is that? Uh-oh. I need to go somewhere again. 
Chapter 5. The trouble with long, hard thinking, or even short, hard thinking, is it makes your eyebrows ache. Especially if you've spent all week trying to think of words that rhyme with hippopotamus. Would be plopibus, zippy wadipus, kipper platypus, dripospotinus, dripospotinus. I've tried absolutely everything, but none of them work. Plus the trouble with magic spells. If they don't rhyme properly, the magic doesn't work properly either. Anyway, I've given up thinking about hippopotamuses now. What's the point of having a magic spell that rhymes really well with hippopotamus if you can't use it? I'm not allowed out to play with Gabby today, so we can't dig a bigger mud trap and we can't turn tiptoes into hippopotamus. Thanks to mom, Gabby and me can't do any secret club things at all today. So that's that. My mom says if I keep frowning and the wind changes, my face will stay that way. Well, she should have thought of that before she grounded me. It's totally her fault I can't go out to play with Gabby, and it's totally her fault I'm having to frown so much. I mean, just think. If it had been windy this morning when I opened the front door, my face might have turned into the worst frowning face in the world. Forever. And who would have been to blame? It wouldn't have been me. It wouldn't have been Gabby. It would have... It would have been mom. It would have been totally all mom's fault and our front doors. Oh dear, I need to go somewhere again. Back in a minute. Well, that's the end of this channel. If you liked it, please click many likes and subscribe to Eating Club. I'll come back later with a new and improved channel. Bye, everybody.